Okay, we're back again. This is Dave Vellante and I'm with Stu Miniman. Uh, we're with Wikibon.org and this is theCUBE, SiliconAngle.tv's live production of Dell Storage Forum 2012. We're here live in Boston and uh, we are simulcasting in San Jose at the Hadoop Summit. Uh, our colleague John Furrier and Jeff Kelly are there. We got a team on the ground covering the big data trends uh, at Hadoop Summit uh, with Hortonworks and a number of the other companies that are gathering there in San Jose. But we're here in Boston talking about Dell, talking about small business storage, talking about integration, converged infrastructure, flash, the whole gamut of Dell, the transformation of Dell. Big news this morning, Dell's announced that it's going to uh, pay a dividend. Uh, Michael Dell was on a conference call with, with analysts trying to help them understand the transformation of Dell. Dell's going to cut a couple of billion dollars in cost over the next three years. Uh, the stock price is up today. Uh, that's good news. Um, Tarkin Maynard was on, talking about the WISE integration and the WISE acquisition, a big move by Dell to you know, get into the end user computing space beyond the, you know, the typical desktop and laptop. So a lot going on here. And we're here with Denny Connor, good friend and uh, analyst, writer at uh, Storage Strategies now, a, a person that I have known for a number of years, one of the, the best, I don't even know how to categorize you anymore, Denny. It's like <laughs> analysts, writers, journalists, you know, bloggers, you know, Twitter, social media maven, but so welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, well we do it all. Um, we, we're an analyst firm you know, that specializes in storage and virtualization, um, but also in, in small business and the, the technologies and the products that they adopt and, and the trends that they, they go after. Um, I also write for Information Week um, and I think we first met when I was writing for Network World. Yeah, which, we were at IDG together, right? We were, we were at IDG yeah. together. So it's been a long, long thing, but I, you know, covered storage for about, oh, 15 years now. And um, it was particularly interesting to come to um, Dell's uh, storage summit because I've been to several of the C drives before, mm -hmm. um, probably for the last, oh, five years. And they're always a really interesting mix of, of customers and analysts and press all together and talking and, and chatting about, about storage Makes technologies. Makes it fun and diverse, yeah, it right? Very, it yeah. really does, it really does. Um, and so I, I think one of the th most interesting things was if, is if, if a San Antonio company hadn't, hadn't coined the term fanatic support, when we talk to Dell customers, they talk about their co-pilot support and they're absolutely rabid about it. And I mean, how excited they get about it. They, they say, you know, we had a drive failure. We didn't even know about a drive failure until the driver arrived on the front door the next day. You know, and that's the first time we heard about it. <laughs> and to, to see Dell possibly extend that to its Equalogic and its Power Vault and to its server lines would be a really exciting thing for for customers. Well, you know, um, when large companies buy small companies, a lot of times, um, they pollute them, yeah. Um, and uh, we haven't seen that with Dell. I mean, the, obviously the jury's still up, but we're seeing very positive momentum, and the customers are very seem very happy about the integration, the scale, uh, the breadth that we're getting. So there doesn't seem they seem to be preserving the DNA of the startup yep. while at the same time bringing scale. Very much so, and, and we've talked to customers who were concerned when their compelling installations got you know, subsumed by Dell or the Equalogic customers, the same thing. And they said, you know, they were wondering how they were going to be handled by Dell. And they said there really wasn't any different and difference and that was really good for them. They were really happy about that. Um, because they wouldn't have been if, if somebody had messed up the acquisition. Right, so um, one of the things that we've heard, well it's two things really, two vectors, right? The, the um, integration of startups that Dell has acquired and other IP that it's acquired and the transformation of Dell into a company that owns its own sort of IP destiny. And the other is the convergence between compute and storage yeah. and, uh, and networking, something that has been a trend that's been going on you know, in this business since the 2009 time frame. Yeah. So what's going on with Dell? Um, are they you know, right in the mix? Are they late to the party? What's their differentiation? What's your take on all that? Well, I think with the Equalogic uh, storage blade that was introduced at the show here, um, that was really exciting for, for end users. They were a little late to the party on that. There was a, another company with a two-letter acronym that came up with a storage blade uh, last summer. Mm -hmm. But the thing about Dell in their 
their B start configurations, their configurations for, you know, companies that need to get deployed fast and don't have the IT infrastructure to do it or the IT you know, management to do it and need to have a fast implementation, they can put in a vStart that is, consists of the PowerEdge servers, the um, PowerConnect switches, and the um, Equalogic storage, and then now this week, the vStarts with the Force 10 switches, which, you know, that integration just took place recently, mm. and also the Compellent, and, um, you know, build systems that are real easily management managed that they have um, application recipes for integration of Exchange or deployment of SQL Server or primarily Microsoft applications right now and also for for integrating in virtualization um, which is so important for most businesses. So, so Denny, I'm, I'm wondering, if you look at those, kind of the VSTAR pieces, yeah. so, you know, Force 10, there was no form factor change. It's a standard Force 10 switch that, that goes in there. Right. Uh, absolutely putting all the pieces together helps the speed of deployment. Uh, I love Ben Tao actually uh, uh, has talked about uh, you know, convergence uh, innovates consumption yeah. uh, on there, so so it goes through faster. Um, my, my question to you is, operationally, does this change the customer environment other than the deployment side? You know, is it simpler for me to manage the day-to-day? -day? Can I do it with less people? Is it more of an IT generalist that manages this rather than what I had before? Well, I think it is more of an IT generalist that manages it, and I, and I think that they're, you know, for a lot of the customers, they've been doing it with, you know, Dell PowerEdge servers before, or with a power vault storage. So having a, you know, all in one, you know, package that, that comes in the front door and and uh, except in businesses that don't have elevators having to cart it up to the upstairs floor of that, um, you know, that it, it's pretty easy. That they, they can put it in they can put it in really fast. I mean, Dell has really commoditized the the uh, the converged infrastructure. And um, I, I think that's that's good. But they've done it for with specifically the SMB in mind, um, that not the the enterprise, um, though that's possible with their um, other converged platform, the M1000E, the blade chassis, um, that they could do that and, and build in higher and more scalable. So, so, so one of the things about uh, doing a converged environment is trying to get a more homogeneous environment, kind of have standard building blocks. The challenges on the lower end of the market, at least from what I've seen, is there's so many more of them that everybody has their own tweaks <laughs> that they need to do. So we, we, we saw some of the, the first entrances in the convergence tend to be the higher end of the margin, that market. You know, Oracle you know, has the, you know, the, yeah. their, their, their red stack and everything's in there and everything's Oracle. And, and you're going to pay for it. Right. And you know, there's other people that, that are in there. So, what, what what do you think about kind of the, the SMB mid market and convergence? Well, I, I think you know, you look at them, and they are primarily deploying on mic on Microsoft platforms with SQL Server and Exchange um, and SharePoint. And Dell has an application recipe for right now for for SharePoint um, that tells how to deploy it and how to configure and makes use rate use recommendations and that. Um, and while they're not going after that high end of the market that would have an Oracle database deployed, um, that's not something that a lot of small businesses are, are doing. Uh, and the small businesses we talk to are, are using Microsoft. And uh, they're pretty happy with it. Uh, they're using iSCSI. They're happy with the performance of iSCSI. And uh, don't, don't see any reason to go elsewhere. Yeah, absolutely. We've got one of our guys down at Microsoft Tech Ed, you know. Uh, so, two things on the SMB. First of all, from yeah. a virtualization standpoint, where do you see the Hyper-V versus VMware battle uh, going? Maybe uh, to address that first? You know, it's interesting is we, we, when I attended VMworld several years ago and I uh, was asking uh, VMware to give me reference customers to talk to, it was primarily um, SMBs that had two to five virtual servers. Um, and now, it's hardly a customer that we don't talk to that doesn't have a virtualization environment. And even in the SMB space, which has you know under a thousand employees, um, we see organizations with 20 employees that have these dictates that no server goes in unless it's virtualized. Now, as for VMware or Hyper-V, um, we're seeing a lot more Hyper-V 
than we are um, VMware. It may be because of the pricing structure, maybe because they're in Microsoft shop and uh, they like what, you know, Dell, when it originally got into virtualization, came out with a Dell Hyper-V package and was installing that in, in SMBs, so. Yeah, and just one of these pundit questions that I have for you. It seems every time SMB gets mentioned on Twitter, you know, everybody's like, you know, it's kind of like open. I'm more open than you, and it's you're not SMB. SMB's smaller. Um, th there was a uh, three-letter name company that made a SMB solution that started well over six figures. Mm -hmm. um, you know, is that an SMB type converged solution, or uh, does it? Wh wh where's the IT budget fit for that? I think you said thousand employees or less. Yeah, a thousand employees or less, and and we're doing a study on SMB storage because it's been a, it's been an area that's been really neglected. Companies like uh, EMC have come out with the you know SMB storage and then dropped it. NetApps come out with SMB storage and then dropped it. Though so they're paying more attention to it yeah, now. E EMC actually did the SMB storage partnered specifically with Dell. Right. So and right. that didn't 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 take. That's right. And yet you look at the you look at American business and ninety five percent of the American businesses qualify as SMBs. So that's a huge chunk of the market that's not not paid attention to. I mean, you look at you look at data protection com products from some of the big companies that has been dumbed down to the SMB and it really can't be. You need to you need to look at the the SMB as, you know, having uh, they have a problem that they need to get solved. They often do it through a managed service provider through a VAR um, and allow that that company to to manage their their infrastructure. Um, they don't have a lot of experience with IT or, or the time or the budget to, to spend on, on IT. Yeah. Um, we talked to one guy who was managing something like 90 petabytes of storage. He was a, a radiology office where they took lots of radiological images. He was the IT administrator, he was office manager, and he said he vacuumed the carpets if he needed to. Right, so actually I'd like to dig into this a little bit. So you guys were talking about some other companies you mentioned, EMC and NetApp specifically, had an initiative and then sort of dropped it. And then after the Dell EMC relationship cooled off, EMC announces VNXE. Right. right? So right. that's obviously targeted toward small and mid sized businesses. How do you compare that sort of mindset with what, what Dell does in SMB? Because I think that Dell is single, single mindedly focused on, on the SMB business. And that's you know maybe more of the M in the SMB, mm -hmm. but still the, the the small businesses who go in and buy a Power Ed, Power Edge server and then it expands to two servers and three servers and that um, these other companies have you know hu these huge audiences and for them the SMB is a small though you know unrealized audience that they're now paying. Paying attention yeah, to. we got to go after that because it's future growth. The IDC price band show, that's where a lot of growth is. So let's exactly. go do something there versus what Darren Thomas said last year. We, we want to be the leader in SMB, period. That's our strategy. Yeah. Are they the leader in SMB storage? I would think so. I yeah. think that I, I would look to them as a leader in SMB storage. Right. Yeah. So, Denny, w what about cloud for SMB? Can't we just, you know, go take it all to the cloud? Uh, no, I don't think, and I think it'd be foolhardy to tell everyone to take everything to the cloud. I mean, when you look at the SMB, when we did a, a cloud storage survey last year in partnership with the um, Storage Networking Industry Association, um, we found that the people that were adopting cloud first were SMBs. Um, that it wasn't necessarily, though, in those SMBs, the IT manager, but the CIO that said, we're going to have a cloud initiative. Um, and that for them, the applications that they were going to put in the cloud were backup and recovery, mm -hmm. disaster recovery. Archive. Because for archive, but archive to a lesser point than, than this. Yeah. Um, okay. And that it was because it was an easy way for them to replace their, you know, tape-based, shuttle it off in a truck, maybe get it back, you know, in time to, to recover your business. Um, but that you could have a cloud alternative. We talk to businesses and there are some companies who say, you know, let's just go with pure cloud. I mean, some vendors who have software that said, let's just go to a pure cloud. I, I think that's foolhardy because you really need to protect your data on, on site, you know, on disk, as well as maybe shuttle it in, into the cloud. And um, so we've seen um, SMBs be really excited ab about that, that opportunity. So Danny, you said you've been following storage for the past 15 years. What are some of the 
big changes that you've seen, and what do you, you know, put on your, bring out your telescope, what do you see for the future? Um, well, what, you know, when I started covering storage, we, we were talking about fiber channel back then. I mean, we had companies like Gadzooks who, and, you know, I mean, you sure, worked with Gadzooks pubs. years Absolutely. ago. Absolutely, I, I, I remember still, Gadzooks. I still have lots of um, notepads from Gadzooks. Uh, uh, Vixel, you know. we've got the uh, all, all the mugs and T-shirts yeah. from uh, <laughs> companies that have gone by the wayside have been acquired. Yeah, and um, we were talking about Fiber Channel, and then you know we got into the transition to iSCSI, and people said iSCSI is just not going to perform, and yet talking to customers, it hasn't been a performance problem for them at all. I mean, except for the largest companies with, a, you know, true, huge transaction processing needs. Yeah, then, then you know, iSCSI's not going to go well. So when Equalogic came out, and that was um, probably, what, 10 years ago at the server summit, the Michael Peterson server oh, right. summit. Um, you know, people wondered about that. I said, yeah, well, well gee, we, you know, we're using direct attached storage and now we're expected to do this. And, and my, Equalogic was able to make that transition for those customers too, to a um, shared storage. Right, and it's okay, so, so, so we've seen a, a, sh a sh dramatic shift to IP-based storage. That's okay, right. Which has sucked a lot of the cost out. Mm -hmm. um, That's right and made it appealing for small businesses. So what do you see going forward? Is that, is that class of storage going to become the predominant type of storage in your view? Or are we going to see a bifurcated market for a while? Or what's your, what's your crystal ball tell you? I, I think you're going to see an awful lot of um, SaaS-based storage. Um, less SATA, an awful lot less fiber channel. I mean, there are, there are big companies that are shipping no fiber channel anymore. And uh, it's all SaaS based, but also that we're going to be ten paying a lot of attention to SSD implementations where, where um, you need them, where you have applications that, that require you know really high performance. You guys do a lot of research on SSD. We do do a lot of research on SSDs, and, and actually we have a, a newsletter that comes out twice a week that I think you receive. Oh yeah. I think everybody receives it. I think we, we have about seven thousand people that get our newsletter, mm -hmm. and that's about a third. Um, end users, a third vendors, a third uh, venture capitalists. Um, and we get a lot of feedback, but we cover most of our SSD research in that newsletter. Um, so you can see it there. Um, one of my partners, Jim Bagley, he's our expert on, on SSDs. Um, I can't go a thimbleful of what he can go on SSDs. So, so how do people get that newsletter? Uh, it's free. So uh, just, just go to storagestrategiesnow.com? SSGnow.com, and you can sign up for the newsletter, and it comes out twice a week, and that rolls up all of our, all of our writing, our reports, our um, SSD research, our cloud research, our SMB, and uh, um, we just did a data deduplication, some data dedupe research, um, as well as information week coverage, Fantastic, and all free, all, free. all open, no firewall. We love the model. We you love know, it. Democratizing the research slash publishing slash analyst business. That's right. And, uh, right there. Uh, excellent, Denny Connor. Well, thanks very much for taking time out of your oh. schedule to join us on the Cube. And, Thank you uh, for having me. Good luck with everything. It was fun. It was Thank pleasure you. to see you. All right. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be right back to wrap thanks, up Stu. from the Dell Storage Forum 2012 in Boston. This is the Cube. <laughs>